But I, the proof that I'm a pro is that I knew it was. You you had a it, you had a feeling that your headphone was flipped inside out yeah. and it felt wrong. Yeah, it felt wrong. So, so it makes you a pro. Yeah. <laughs> All right, move the move the mic a little bit closer. Okay, how's that? Oh, that's beautiful. That sounds great. Okay. All right, so uh, we're gonna get it. We're gonna get into this right now. You wanna sing with me, right? Everybody sing with me. What it do y'all what it do y'all what it do y'all oh oh man hold up so we gotta what it fucking do it's your boy why fucking rice plus one plus one what it do so what it do y'all what it do uh, thank you guys for tuning in this is in fact <laughs> to the fucking face. <laughs> yo what it do this is in fact your boy rice thank you guys so much for tuning into the pod man Thank you guys so much for tuning in all week to the 60 Seconds with Rice videos. Uh, I am, in fact, here today with a plus one. This, while wow, I am out of breath. This is, what the winter, this is what the winter storm will that do to you, man. from bouncing. From bouncing <laughs> on a cat. Couch. From bouncing on a couch, your boy is out of breath. Hold up. Mm-hmm. Ah. So, yeah, so I am, in fact, here with a plus one today. My mom is sitting right here off camera. She did not want to be seen, but she is, in fact, being heard because she is mic'd up. What'd it do, Ma? Uh, Chilling. Oh, wow. That sounds uh, and, so much and, better. And getting ready to be on the first podcast ever. Hey, this is your first podcast ever? Ever. This, this, is, an, this is very exciting. And actually. it was very hard. I just want to say, starting off, that on a bigger screen, I can see the podcast from this week, earlier this week. And it was very hard to get in an uplifting mood while looking at a picture of Ted Cruz. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so so what I did is I actually have a TV set up. So I have my TV set up uh, right behind my, uh, my laptop here so that it's a bigger screen. Uh, so that it's easier to actually view things, uh, to view the podcast, the 60 Seconds with Rice video. So that's what she's referring to. Actually, sorry, not sorry. Yeah, no, sorry, not sorry. Fuck Ted Cruz, man. Fuck that boy. What's up, motherfucker? The fact that AOC did more, for, I mean, we'll get into it, but yeah. the fact that AOC did more for Texas than Ted Cruz did, like, that shit's crazy to me. She raised, what, like, two milli in, like, a, three, a few days? Three, It was up to three, three? now the last oh, time I looked. That's what's up. I know it was, like, two million in, yeah. like, a day or something like cut, that. He did a cut and run, no he, doubt. he definitely did a cut and run. He definitely cut and ran. Uh, but usually I get into something... Uh, like early on in the pod, but I think this week what I'm going to do is try to get through the early section of these uh, 60 Seconds with Rice videos so we can touch on uh, other news topics and talk a little bit after we get done. So um, you ready to go ahead and get started, Ma? Yes, and I will try to get past the extreme buzzkill of looking up at him. <laughs> so, well, so we're, we're, yeah. well, in four videos, we'll be getting to them, but right, all right. right. So this is actually the first video... It is called Texas Chili. 
Now, obviously, I made this on uh, Monday before everything got a little bit crazier in Texas, before the grid completely failed uh, and people had, you know, $20,000 electricity bills. Uh, but this is more of a satire episode, more or less. Uh, this is not meant to demean what's happening down there because obviously that was never my intention. So just just kind of putting that out there before we get into it. So uh, here is episode 89, Texas Chili. What did Ch- you fucking do? It's your boy, why fucking right? Oh, hi. This is, in fact, your boy, Rice. And on today's episode of 60 Seconds, we're talking about Texas chili. But not the kind you can eat. Oh, no. Because Cincinnati chili, baby, all day, number one. What we all talk about is how cold as fuck it is down in Texas right now. They got hit with a massive winter storm, and it is absolutely fucking insane. It's redefining what Texas chili means. But for real, though, it is a serious situation. There's like two and a half million people out of power right now. It's crazy. But, like, they signed a state of emergency and got that shit passed quick. But it's funny how quick you can pass a state of emergency for a cold front, but when it comes to COVID, y'all ain't going to do shit. You say it's unconstitutional, but that's a different story, different day. This is about global warming, man, because people think, especially in Texas, I've heard a lot, people think global warming means it gets hotter. If it's not getting hotter, it's not happening. It's not real. No. Just like when you get a fever and you got to cool down, Mother Earth is going to fight back and try to cool herself down. Have y'all seen Day After Tomorrow? Have you seen it? Because that's literally what's happening in Texas right now. Believe it. What? Okay, so that was uh, episode 89, Texas Chili, more or less, just kind of touching on the first uh, wave of, like, the cold front and everything that was coming through there, Um, you know, and really I kind of flipped a script and kind of talked more about global warming than anything uh, was the main message there, uh, that global warming is actually impacting uh, places like Texas. I know they're saying that as a result of the Arctic caps, you know, more or less melting and getting hotter, that the jet stream itself is becoming more wavy. Uh, so as it dips, uh, as as those dips are happening further and further south, uh, these you know, it's becoming more and more likely that cold snaps like this could happen. Um, but, <clears throat> but I mean, it really is sad what's happening down in Texas this week. Yeah, it is. Very, very sad. And uh, just because something's not the norm somewhere, um, I, I have a feeling that, uh, you know, they need to get more on, on the ball with like, you know, it's not likely to happen, but it could happen. And we need to have some better preparation for it. Or I think they need to look at or think about more what if scenarios, you know, that could happen and not just jump into the, um, you know, the, the, the finger pointing and blaming and that doesn't help anybody. And, you know, I think that, uh, you know, global warming, um, touching on that a little bit, that's a very complicated issue. It's just not, it's just not so simple. And I think, I think a lot of people that don't believe in it should, you know, spend some time actually researching it as much as they can. Oh, exactly. And I mean, I mean, really Texas, their, their big problem is the fact that they, uh, you know, they are so, you know, anti big government that they more or less decided to remove their entire grid to private corporations. They would rather, uh, you know, it's just like, you know, when you look at banks, like, you know, uh, the Federal Reserve technically controls the money in, you know, in, in America. So what Texas did essentially is the same as if they, if Texas banks had said, Uh, We don't want to rely on the Federal Reserve. We have our own. We're going to base our finances of money based on the amount of oil we have in Texas. And then at the point that, you know, and they deregulate themselves from federal currency and they go with a Texas currency. You know, that's what they did essentially to their electric is is they centralized it. They, They gave the power to individual companies and then you know the states around them of what is it New Mexico that's next to them? I, yeah, I, I know it's Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Louisiana. Uh. <laughs> what? Hey, I got a bird, man. Uh, well, like they could if they were connected to the federal power grid, like they could have borrowed electricity. But as a result of of their own arrogance and their own unwillingness to be, you know, a part of the collective. 
Um, you know, and obviously we're not trying to shit on Texas in the sense that like, you know, let's, let's kind of harp on, on a place that's already hit bad, but it's the same kind of reaction as Hurricane Katrina. They decided to put, uh, instead of, uh, I shaped levees, they put T shaped. And because of that, uh, because of the fact that they didn't have that extra, uh, reinforcement on the, on the levee, it, it broke, you know, and that was a decision made to cut, cut expenses and to, to, to not, you know, fundamentally prepare for the what-if scenario. Uh, okay, yeah, so New Mexico. So, yeah, it was New Mexico, Louisiana, Arkansas, Oklahoma, New Mexico. See, I wasn't terribly off. I got three out of four, you know, 75%. That's a passing grade in school. Um, but, yeah, so that's kind of the situation there, man. Uh, you know, prayers up to everybody down there that's going through it right now, to people who are, you know, struggling to find water and to uh, find resources and things like that. Luckily, uh, Joe Biden actually does enjoy using FEMA. Uh, and I shouldn't say enjoy using, you know, but he actually is somebody who, you know, cause no one enjoys having to call in FEMA. Maybe embraces. He embraces. That's the word. That's the fucking word. This is why I got my mom here because she, uh, can, can fill in the blanks. Uh, he embraces utilizing FEMA and, and making sure that Americans are actually taken care of in disasters rather than mm-hmm. throwing, um, Rather than throwing paper towels at people. Tossing, yeah. Tossing yeah. them through the Just, air. Wee. All right, so that was episode 89. Um, so this week I actually had to uh, come down to Franklin in order to uh, Franklin, Tennessee, uh, because I am uh, kind of uh, doing a little bit of work down this way. And obviously, you know, while I'm here helping my mom who's moving and shaking and move through driving in the snow because you are a terrible driver in the snow. Yeah. And sometimes uh, not so good when there's not snow, but I mean, <laughs> I, I mean, I, I wasn't going to go that far, yeah. but I mean, if that's where you want to go. Yeah. Uh, so I came in on Tuesday. Uh, I got in on Tuesday and everything was just closed down. So this is um this is tuesday's episode episode 90 the hood is open what do you fucking do it's your boy why fucking right what do you do y'all this is in fact your boy right so on today's episode of 60 seconds we're talking about how a little cold weather has shut literally everything in tennessee down so i don't comprehend what's going on here but i just left the house i was trying to go buy some groceries and some basic essentials went to walmart target kroger walgreens gas stations everything everything and thank god Literally. for the hood gas station because they're the only motherfuckers open i don't get it i really don't fucking understand this like a little bit of snow happens what happened to four by four you know four by four drive on your truck what happened to four by four drive on the jeep I don't get this, man. I really do not fucking comprehend because I'm in a Hyundai Sonata driving around like it ain't nothing. But I'm from Ohio. So, hey, I understand how to actually drive in snow and I'm not scared about it. So, I don't know. Y'all should figure that out. But closing everything at seven, that's fucked. Yeah, so that was episode 90. Uh, So, yeah, when I got in, I came in and I was like, yo, I'm going to pull up at uh, I'm going to pull up at Walmart, you know, cop a couple things, whatever, whatever, because there wasn't really any food here because mom just got back in from Cincinnati. Um, And it was like, "Okay, what do we uh, what do we do? And yeah, we just uh, every place we well. They didn't even touch the streets near my place. Nah, not at all. So those those were uh, trippy to get past. But then there were some roads that were perfectly clean. Not that many, but um, parking lots of businesses were trashed. You know, not not snow plowed or anything either. So that was that was another thing. And then you know made our way over to um, no started noticing that so many things were closed down and it was barely seven o'clock it was you know and just to see like an entire city shut down we stopped at two gas stations that looked the get like literally and we're not talking about we're not talking about like like some random gas stations here and there like no this is a shell and a tiger mart you know which is basically the exxon stations here in, in local nashville um and they looked open and like they were operating all the lights on and then um you know, either the the door was locked on one and the other one, 
we were able to walk in to the announcement that they're closed. And uh, so no matter where we went, um, the town literally like was one almost 100% shut down except for those um, very, very small uh, little like, what would you call it? A pony keg. Well, a pony keg is where you drive through. Well, yeah, it wasn't right? even really a drive through. No, they had a beer cave. It was mainly they a, had a, a beer, beer cave. cave. I mean, and I mean, some, and that's, a few and that's, other I items. mean, well, and that's what you expect. Like, and this is, and that was sort of my point with with. Uh, <laughs> I love her face every time I do that. Well, like, that's <laughs> <laughs> um. So, really, my point for this video was the fact that like. The city normally where my mom stays, everything is typically closed by eight or nine. And then you have your local staples like a White Castles and a Jack in the Box and a, or not a White Castle, a fucking Wendy's and a, a Jack in the Box and a McDonald's that are open later. But like more or less everything around here closes by eight or nine, which Nashville is kind of the same way, too, except for the bars and, the, you know, venues and stuff. But I'm a little south of Nashville. Here. Well, yeah, 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 you're down here in Franklin. Just very but, close to Nashville downtown. Um, but, like, this whole area kind of closes, you know, typically a little earlier than most. Like, typically, like, a place would close it, like, a Walmart would close at 10. Or 11. Uh, or 11. And here they close it, like, 9 usually. My point was, though, is that, like, if y'all cared about the safety of your employees, then you wouldn't have called them into work at all. But, no, you called them into work from 5, 6 a.m. in the morning until 7 o'clock at night. But at the point that it's 7 o'clock at night and it's already dark outside it's already snowing outside it's already all of that what is the like fundamental problem with well, like what what is it closing an hour early what is what is that gonna actually accomplish when it comes to safety of your employees because i saw that a couple of times on on like windows and shit around here where it was like you pull up and it said due to the you know we closed an hour early for the safety of our employees or we closed at this time for the safety of our employees and it's like but you had them drive in during the snow and ice. Like, you had them actually come into work. So, like, clearly you didn't actually care. You were just, you know, you just got to a point where, like, the morale was so low, you had to send everybody home. And that's kind of fucked. Like, I don't know. That's just me. But, like, it, the, the post was also kind of just shouting out, like, locally owned businesses like this where, like, these motherfuckers get it. Like, and and I remember growing up, and like being at Graham's house where she had a little convenience store right behind her house and a pony keg that was like a block away that just like, it didn't matter if it was rain, sleet, snow, windstorm, mm -hmm. anything. Like these motherfuckers were always open and like they came in the clutch a lot. Ready for business. <laughs> they was always ready for business, man. Like they are true hustlers and shout out to local business owners. Um, with that said, so talking about snow safety, uh, next episode, episode 91, is actually called Snow Safety, What Not to Do. So let's peep this. What do you fucking do? It's your boy, why fucking right? What it do, y'all? This is In Fact, Your Boy Rice, and on today's episode of 60 Seconds, we are having a snow safety seminar. You see this snow coming down around me? Cool, it looks fun, right? But playing with snow is like playing with fire. You've got to be careful, especially if you don't know what the fuck you're doing. I just went, and take it from a kid from Ohio, I just witnessed a bunch of idiots in cars who did not have, had no right to be in a car or on the road. I come back and I read a story about this guy who got in his truck, decided to tie up a fucking tube, put his kids in the tube, and go sledding. I'm sure you can guess where this is going. They crashed the fucking sled into a mailbox because they were being, the father was being an idiot and didn't think about his children's safety. The kid got injured and has now died from his injuries right here in Nashville. That's fucking stupid. And now I'm looking and seeing on socials all these people want to have snowball fights. You're literally going <coughs> to and throw fucking COVID at people. Literally. If you're going to play in snow, play safe. What is okay, so yeah, that was snow safety, what not to do. Uh, touching on some really idiotic stuff that I saw from uh, from this week. Uh, you know, just kind of going around and people, what people was talking about, people was doing. Uh, it's really sad to hear about that kid. Um, right. Like, that's really just... Sad. And, like, my thing is, is, like, like, no, am I trying to harp on a family who obviously going through it? Absolutely not. But, like, you got to be smart about shit, man. Like, my brother... Uh, God rest his soul. He had a friend who uh, he was a skater and he decided to grab the back of a of a moving car 
and just to get a lot of speed and and be crazy and be wild and shit and like that's a stupid move because he ended up getting brain damage like yeah brain surgery he had to have serious brain surgery yeah like shit and, was crazy and he was in the hospital for quite a bit like and yeah it's so dangerous and you know i saw an article that vanderbilt children said they've they've never seen so many like serious um injuries to children you know from sledding and and everything this this past week so um uh it's you know you just get so upset when you hear this you know when when it's something that could have been avoidable and um you know what can i say make good decisions think things through and uh put some safety gear on your kids it's you know they may not think it looks cool, but it's it could save their life. Well, and the thing is, too, is like you grew up in West Virginia and then more or less spent more of your childhood Most of my in, life in, in Cincinnati. Cincinnati. Yeah. Um, you know, I grew up in Cincinnati. We grew up. And that was also during a time period with which snow like actually happened. Like it wasn't like Cincinnati snow is now where it's like you get one or two winter storms and that's it. Like it was like a legitimate snowstorm just on repeat where you would get a ton of snow like i remember one day when um uh, williams avenue had snow three quarters of the way up the back door i don't know if you remember that or not but like like it like they had like you couldn't get into the school because the snow was blocking like, like we grew up in the time period, you know, growing up in the 90s and the early 2000s there, it was like, like there was snow out there. And we learned, and that's the thing though, is, is that's the difference. When you grow up in the north and you're around snow, you're used to it. You know, you, you are used to snow. You're used to uh, what safety protocols to do when you're in the snow. Your parents know, your cousins know. You kind of get a gist of it. And yes, people take risks. But, and, and my point would kind of in the text of that post as well, was that you, if you're not, if you didn't grow up around snow, if this is like some of your first experiences with snow, stop trying to do stupid shit you see on TikTok. Like, like that's not, that you, you, like the reason people on TikTok can pull off some of this dumb shit is because they have grown up in and around snow is it a good move regardless where you grow up no is jumping off your roof on roof onto an icy trampoline to get a really cool slow motion shot a safe idea absolutely not but my point is that if this happens to you in texas or in georgia or in tennessee or in oklahoma where you really don't get a whole lot of snow like that except for every once in a while you might not want to try stupid shit because you are more likely to get hurt than the people who grow up in Minnesota, in South Dakota, in Ohio, in Michigan, in New York, who have to deal with snow four out of 12 months a year on repeat. Right. right. You know. Um, and then there were, um, I knew because uh, what was going on with the weather here, because I was uh, looking at it from an adult driving perspective or even walking on it and there at times there there was hail coming down there was um freezing rain a lot of ice under like what felt like soft snow so when you get past that layer of soft snow you're dealing with some really super slick ice uh which brings on you know more accidents apparently um a toddler that was taken uh, sledding also this past week nearly went into a body of water and the, and the mother was injured trying to keep that from happening, which I think she did, but, uh, they both could have perished, you know? So, Oh yeah. Cause if it's this cold out and you go into a, a body of water and you're not able to control right. yourself or, or, uh, find a way to warm yourself, like you could, you could end up with hypothermia or some shit like mm. super quick. Well, and it would be very hard to find somebody in some murky, icy water. Well, no, and I'm saying yeah. like, you know, even, oh, even if, just to pull someone, out. even if just to pull someone out, you know, like if mm -hmm. it's, you know, if it's 13 degrees outside and your body is not used to the cold. And that's sort of my point is like the reason you see motherfuckers up at Green Bay Lambeau Field in underwear and they're painted all green and yellow 
is because they live in this. Their bodies are used to it. You know, it's the reason why you see white Karens flying down from Ohio to Florida and in a span of two hours, their skin looks like a fucking lobster. Whereas the Karen who who lives in the villages can be outside all day. It's because she has lived there for the last 30 years and her body is now used to the, the intensity of the sun and the heat. Miss Karen from Ohio doesn't have that luxury because she's not used to being there near the near the equator. You know what I'm saying? Like like you have to you have to understand your body and you have to understand your capabilities. Like people trying to drive in the snow, like I know how to drive in the snow. I know how to move my tires and I know the tricks and the tips and everything. Like I grew up understanding what I have to do in certain circumstances when it comes to the snow. Like these motherfuckers out here who don't like you need to stay your ass home because shit's just gonna get worse and the, i think the point is is just take care of yourself and each other because there's a lot of life to live folks exactly a lot of, a lot of happy good times and lots to do in life lots of things to do um together don't want to lose anybody exactly and so speaking of things getting worse uh, Ted Cruz made his whole situation get a whole lot worse this week. Uh, so we're going to touch on Ted's Cancun cruise. Now, obviously, we all know it was a flight. But just like I said in here, it was just too, it was too, the wordplay was too great. You know, the word Ted's Cancun cruise, you know. Hey, he's cruising and losing. He's cruising to a losing. Uh, all right. So uh, here is episode 92, Ted's Cancun cruise. What it fucking do? Hit your boy, why fucking? What it do, y'all? This is in fact your boy Rice, and on today's episode of 60 Seconds, we're in bright and sunny Cancun. Oh my god, like I can't believe it. I'm having so much fun. It's so amazing that no, that's not me. That's actually your boy Ted Cruz. While his state is in complete disarray, while he shat on California's energy grid, his energy grid is completely gone to shit in the handbasket. And the fact of the matter is your people are struggling. They are truthfully in dire need and your dumbass hops on a fucking Cancun flight? Come on, dog. What are you doing? What, you think we weren't going to spot you in a mask? Even Fox News is confirming this shit. Your own fucking Republican GOP people calling you out for this shit. Bro, what is wrong with you? Better or worry can people out here trying to help people and your ass going to sit marks on a beach. Okay, so this was actually one of the most interesting storylines of the week. Um, I just, my like, I was shocked, but also not shocked. And I think I said it on Twitter when I posted this. I was shocked, but also not shocked. Um, you know, and, and I feel like that's a lot of cases when it comes to, you know, and for me, I, again, I sit in the middle. I am not a liberal or a Republican. I'm not a Democrat or a Republican. I'm not liberal or conservative. I sit in the middle. I, uh, you know, I, I look at f things from all different sides, but like as of late, man, like I feel like, you know, Republicans are in this like do as I say, not as I do mentality where it's like, you know, you, you're going to hype, you're going to harp on uh speaker pelosi for getting her hair cut and taking her mask off and like y'all made that such a huge fucking deal like like i mean that shit was everywhere and then when ted cruz takes a fucking cancun flight in the middle of a humanitarian crisis in his own state where other government officials which we kind of alluded to a little earlier where other government officials from lands far far away as i said in the text of this post are are doing more for your state while you tuck and run like that shit's crazy to me like like that's absolutely fucking bonkers man um i have so much that i could say about <laughs> ted cruz and we don't have enough time in the podcast but um and um this issue is just um you know on top piled on top of so many other things that uh that he's done that are not for the people and i i struggle i struggle to figure out um what is the glue that you know that bonds them to somebody who's so so arrogantly um you know just 
not in touch with the people shows he doesn't care. And, you know, I can go on to social media and see so many people defending him. Um, well, but more not defending him. <laughs> but, oh, there's so but, many. Yeah, he, I mean, like I, mean, I said, even his own, even people in his own party, you know, were saying like the photos speak for themselves. Like, yeah. like, what are you doing? There's, you know? there's just no, there's just no defense, uh, for some things that you do. And, and this is one of them. Um, you know, people, if they ever needed their elected officials to step up, um, this is a case where, where Texas really, really needed all hands on deck. Yeah, well, and I think, you know, and I think, in. and I think too, like, obviously, you know, Ted Cruz in a position he's in, he's a state senator, you know, and, and with that, you know, what people were pointing out is, yo, you got contacts, you can make phone calls, you can, you can link up with people in like, you know, really make change. You can press some people, you know, to to come and help, this, that, and the third. And he was, like, trying to say, like, oh, well, I'm going to, you know, I was just going to work from the hotel room the whole time, and, like, I was going to work from home, you know. And, and it's not the fact that, like, you or know, from, I think or, what Or it, from your luxury Ritz. Well, suite. and that's, and that's that, you know, and, yeah, you're staying at the Ritz-Carlton, which is $309 a night. They ran the, they ran the number of what the price would have been through the weekend for a standard room at the Ritz-Carlton. Now, now, he could have definitely been staying in some, like, suite or private suite or some shit that was a lot more money than that. You know, they could have paid for the all-inclusive, you know, four-day trip, uh, you know, where you get all the tequila and food that you want, uh, which I guarantee you they did. You know, if there's four of them going down there, five of them going down there, a whole community well, they, they of people were, yeah, flying they, down they, there. They were meeting friends, whatever. Yeah, yeah. And and it really, I think the fact of the matter is, though, is it also showed... Um, it, it, it kind of showed class like it, it showed like the class separation where you are in a situation where you're able to just run away as free as a bird. Uh, you know, you're able to migrate south to a country you say is full of rapists and criminals, uh, but you're going to go down there and and hang out while your people are struggling. And it's not that like anyone deserves any more or less to be in a situation but, like, when you are an elected official and some shit's popping off in your state, you cannot run a Hurricane Harvey, I was there for the people, I was on the ground with the people during Hurricane Harvey commercial for your reelection. And then when some shit like this goes down that's statewide, your ass is like, yo, neighbors, it's really fucking cold here, and we're in the one of the richest districts in Houston. Let's peace the fuck out. Let's leave. That talks about your privilege more than anything. Regardless of whether you were going to work or not, the privilege factor that millions of people who did and did not vote for you are now out of power, who are dealing with lack of water and resources, are going through this shit, and your ass is like, peace the fuck out. I'm going to go get all I can eat and drink down in Cancun. Like, bro, that's, it's, it's, that's fucking nuts, man. The thing to remember is that um, he should not be an elected official. And uh, he should not even be like a paper stamper in, in some kind of government office. Um, you know, he just, uh, he shouldn't be. Because uh, you show what you you show, you show who you are in times in the worst of times. Anybody can look great in the best of times, but you really definitely show what you're made of and who you are in the worst of times. Oh, big facts, and and I think in this case, uh, I'm really hoping that Texas remembers the man who ran away. Um, you know. You have the resources to live, to put you and your family in a comfortable position within Texas so that y'all can be on the ground. But it's really sad that private citizens are out here sacrificing their time and their energy to make sure that people in Texas are taken care of and are given the resources they need while it like hands on, like they, they're in the same situation as these people and they're out here, um, they're out here making sure that the elderly got blankets. They're donating their own shit to, you know, make sure that people are taken care of people that were more well off that, that actually give a damn about people in Texas. We're just actually taking care of 
of the shit in Texas and your ass was Mm-hmm. trying to go get it all inclusive weekend and then you try to blame it on your kids fam how low you gotta be to blame some shit on your kids when literally your neighbors sold your ass out that y'all were like it's cold in our house let's go to cancun like like i didn't see y'all flying down there with a group of uh teenage girls and i didn't see him flying did you see him flying with a group of teenage girls like they was flying with friends i didn't see them flying with friends and, and people... This isn't some fucking spring yeah. break trip. Folks out there, most of all, remember, this was a serious life and death situation yes. in Texas. People were dying. Yes. And... Um, we're, we're dying. Like, they were dying, li- still are dying. Still and it's are. reported that there, there's not going to be a true calculation of how many people died from this scenario of, of things that circulated around this. Uh, it, it's going to take a minute to actually calculate that, but like people are dying. Yeah. So it's, it's for real out yeah, here. People, people couldn't escape their situation. Um, uh, you know, no water and ability, no ability to get to food warmth. Uh, people were, were trying to desperately do things like stay warm in cars or, or trying to charge maybe some kind of medical equipment because they had no power and trying to charge charge their medical their life and death medical equipment up in the cars i mean this was and then uh, dying of carbon monoxide yes, poisoning as a result because they're in the garage trying to stay warm a little bit yeah, while also uh, uh using a power inverter uh, to charge to, to power yeah. their shit like it's i mean i'm thinking about like i heard a story about a grandma and an eight-year-old grandchild that went out and did that you know and and died um from trying to stay warm in the garage by running the car but you know, there's many, many different ways. I'm sure many, many people, many animals froze to death. Um, and um, any extra set of hands uh, from just whoever, anybody. But most of all, if you're elected to speak for and look out for the people, uh, Ted Cruz, um, then you don't, you don't do what you did. You just nah, don't do that. Nah. And, you te- and teach your children. Teach your children compassion and teach your children to to look out for for their neighbor and well like we all don't have to agree on on a like y'all could be on completely different ends of the spectrum of politics but at the end of the day a human life is a human life and we need to understand and i think that's been the biggest thing is is the fact that this is still also a pandemic which kind of talks which kind of touches on that like regardless what kind of side of the political spectrum you're sitting on a human life is a human life and when you have the ability and the capability to to help keep human lives safe, you have to do it. All right, mom's got to step away. So we gonna uh, we gonna take a second here uh, to we gonna just pause this motherfucker. All right, so we are uh, we are back. Thank you guys for tuning in. Uh, so as we make our way back, we also make our way to episode ninety three, the Midwest S. Are you ready for this, Ma? As a Midwesterner? Oh sure. What do you fucking do? It's your boy, why fucking What do you do? This is the fact, your boy Rice. And on today's episode of Sixty Seconds, we're talking about adding an S onto things. So right now, it's trending that Joe Biden said, my years, instead of my year. Well, see, your boy grew up in Cincinnati. Well, we have Kroger and my year. Okay, so you're wrong to tell me that when I add an S to Kroger's and my years, when I say I'm going to Kroger's to buy a can of Skyline Chili, when I say I'm going to my years at 2 in the morning because I got the munchies, Okay, you can't tell me I'm wrong. Just like when I say pop and y'all say soda, or when I say, I don't know what I say. But you know what? What I do say is it is cool to add an S to my S. Okay, so what's up, ma? What's your opinion? What's your opinion on the Midwest S? Well, I you gotta you gotta pull the mic. Oh shoot. You got you got to have a mic next to you. My my mic just swinging away on its own, <laughs> and I had to get it back in control here. <laughs> so, 
Um, okay. So, yeah, we, I think that uh, people do say strange things or say it in their own, like, different way. And um, one of those things would be uh, maybe adding an unnecessary S. But it seems very necessary, if, I guess, if you're saying it with an S. But, um, you know, I mean, my, my biggest uh, mm, Cincinnati thing I always said was, if I didn't understand what somebody said and I needed them to tell me that again, I'd say, please, instead of, could you repeat that or whatever, some other word. Um, yeah, that is something that uh, that is definitely uh, going around is like, like I do, re- I do recall that like, it took me a while after I left Cincinnati to like stop saying please rather than like say that again or say what or like some sort of saying that like kind of uh, insinuated I didn't understand what was being said. Um, but yeah, I don't know. I've always added an S to Kroger's. I've always added an S to Myers. J- it's JC Penney's. Um, I don't know. I just add the like ownership, I guess, to uh, to the stores. I don't know Kroger's brand. I can, I, and that's probably where I got it from because you wouldn't say Kroger brand. You would say it's Kroger's brand, right? Right. In the possessive. And so I think I think that's what it is, is when you buy a Kroger's brand material, Myers brand material, um, you know, or item, you're you're giving it that possessive name. And and it just sounds, you know, and it's it's like when you say a sports team, like like you don't say the the Cincinnati Bengal. You say the Cincinnati Bengals. You don't say the Cincinnati Red, you say the Cincinnati Reds. Uh and so you know, so I guess when you're talking about things like when you're like the Myers staff, you know, you're, you're adding a possessive to uh, to a lot of different things when it comes to Myers and to when it comes to Kroger and things like that. So, so yes, technically they end with an er, but like in all reality, when you're from the Midwest, when you grow up with these stores, you you just call them. You know, it's like Sam's Club. You wouldn't say Sam Club. You know, it is Sam's Club. In today's world with so many things to worry about, it seems that, um, you know, picking out something like adding an S on a word seems uh, pretty insignificant. Well, you know, obviously. Way, you know? Well, well and, and so here's the thing. With 60 Seconds with Rice, everything is very, uh, a lot of times things are very, um, Who were they picking on for that for? Joe Biden? Joe Biden, because yeah. he said Myers. Um, my thing, and, and my thing is, and it just, really all it was, it wasn't picking. It was just like, it sparked the debate. Do you say Meyer or do you no, say I'm Myers? No, I'm not saying, I'm not saying you were picking. I mean, the people that were picking on Joe Biden. Well, I, and, and again, I don't think it was picking on. I don't think it was like them trying to like start a whole thing. It just started the debate. And that's oh. sort of what's great about Twitter is it started the debate. Okay. on Twitter of how do you pronounce it? Like, is it technically pronounced Meyer or is it, do you actually, are you supposed to pronounce it as Myers? Um, and so that's really all it was. I try to also keep things, uh, you know, a, a lot of things that come up like primary stories will typically be more, will be things that are a little more serious. Uh, so I always try to like, I always try to finesse in uh, some, something that's a little more lighthearted. Uh, well, that's true. You know, yeah. and, and that way it's not something that's like too crazy. Uh, but with that said, man, uh, we go back. This one's a little more lighthearted slash taking a shot at Newsmax. Uh, it's called Don't Shit on the Champ, episode 94. What do you fucking do? Hit your boy, why fucking What do you do, right? y'all? This is in fact your boy Rice. And on today's episode of 60 Seconds, we're talking about hashtag National Love Your Pet Day. And how Newsmax had literally, apparently, nothing else to cover today except for trying to shit on Joe Biden's dog on National Love Your Pet Day. How shitty of humans do you have to be to try to shit on a dog that you are so in tune with trying to shit on Joe Biden that you go after an elderly dog? They brought in actual correspondence. Like, you can see it. They brought in actual correspondence to talk on, like, how scruffy the dog looks and how untaken care of it looks. Fam. The last president didn't even have a dog. This president at least does. But if your entire news cycle can revolve around shitting on someone's dog, 
because they're not doing anything crazy and biggest news story is your boy flying down to Cancun? That's shitty. And I hope his dog comes and shits on your lawn. All right, so that was... Which would uh, literally make... If he, in the picture, showed, like, some shit on his head, that would make him a shithead. He is a shithead. He's, <laughs> Greg Kelly is definitely a shithead. Uh, you know, it, it, I don't know, man. Like, that just... That just kind of irked me the wrong way. Like, you choose, like, a really kind of not flattering photo. Like, like, you choose a not flattering photo of a dog and then be like, look at this dog. Like, are you kidding me? Are y'all really that bored over at Newsmax? If so, just shut the channel down. If you really got no news to report on, shut the channel down. Oh, wait, nah, it's because all the news that's happening right now is negative news to the right, and so they got to find something to talk about because the only thing Democrats are doing right now is trying to pass COVID relief bills and get nominations approved. Like, like <laughs> you can't really shit on Democrats right now for the two things that are trying to happen, which is transfer peaceful transfer of power and... Uh, trying to get people help through COVID. Like, I mean, obviously there's shit going on with Democrats that like, you know, need to get discussed and need to get talked about. But like the fact that you are so low on content that yo ass got to go after a dog. That shit just crazy to me, bro. Right. Um, and, um, you know, yeah, I agree. When you have to go like picking apart the looks of an animal living in the white house, your, your news day is, um, your news day is like, um, it's, it's hit the bottom of the barrel pretty much, you know, of course. Exactly. Yeah. And, um, uh, you know, being, a very, very much an animal lover. And I think it's, I, it's, it's great to, um, see a family, uh, part of the family uh, is two dogs uh, living in the White House. I believe they're both rescues. Uh, a lot of positive stuff to focus on, um, you know, about these these two. What are their names uh, again? It's uh, Champ and <laughs> shit. Champ and shit. <laughs> <No>. Sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, man. This is just, it's really stupid to me, man. Uh, you know, there's not really a whole much more you can talk about on that. It's just to dedicate a whole news segment on on a channel who's trying to actually be real news. There's a reason why they're like, even though Fox News is taking a hit from the right, like the reason Fox News still exists in a more prevalent light than Newsmax is literally that. Like that right there is exactly why Newsmax will never actually be considered real news because that's not real journalism. That's literally a fucking vlogger with an opinion. That like that isn't that like a fourteen year old vlogger with an opinion? Like that feels like that's what that was. It's pretty juvenile, but we've been through a lot of a lot of uh, juvenile tactics, um, you know, through the past four years. It's really dumb. And but oh, shout out to Champ uh, and Major. Major, Champ yes. and Major. Um Champ and Major. That's and, facts. And shout out to everybody who's out there saving um you know, some animal from um sitting in a uh cage at the pound, you know, and bringing them home. So Yep. Shout out, shout out to that. All right, so what we got to do now is actually uh, episode 95. This is going to be Sunday's take. Uh, not sure what we're going to call it yet, but we are going to uh, figure it out. So so we got we got 60 seconds. I can't even... Uh, oh, oh, no, stop, stop, stop. Whoa, stop, reset. Okay, that's how we do it. That's how we do it on a pod. You know what I'm saying? All right, so let's go back over here. All right, so we got 60 seconds to talk about some shit, and then we're going to have to uh, move on. What do you fucking do? It's your boy, why fucking right? What it do, y'all? This is, in fact, your boy, Rice. And on today's episode of 60 Seconds, we actually are talking about a little bit more positive news and perseverance landing on Mars. Now, I'm actually pretty stoked about this as somebody who loves space and sci-fi and a lot of that stuff, man. Like, I'm actually really stoked about the exploration beyond what we are 
uh, on planet Earth. I do not believe that planet Earth is the like end all be all for life in the universe. Clearly, the reason we got like water and shit on here is not because Earth just magically had it. Uh, I feel like life was created elsewhere in the universe and and slowly and surely it migrated to, to the planet Earth over billions of years. And and like slowly those, you know, we kind of grew into what we are today. Uh, but I'm just really excited, man. I think it's going to be really dope. Some of the photos coming back uh, already are just really cool, really inspiring, really uh, cool. And, you know, just really looking forward to seeing what this brings our way. So, yeah, that is uh, that's how 60 seconds of rice gets done, ma. Just boom, right. bam. Nice. You know, uh, you know, when you got to do it live, you can't uh, you can't do retakes. There's no redos, nothing like that. So, uh, but yeah, man, I don't know, man. Like, I'm just really stoked. Perseverance landed on what? Wednesday is when they landed. Oh, February 18th. God. Was that a Wednesday? I think it was a Wednesday. Uh, but they landed on February 18th, uh, landed on Mars. They started getting photos and, and stuff back. And like, I don't know, man. Like, I just think. No. It's, what? Oh. The date, I think Wednesday was, um, Wednesday was... Wasn't that February 18th? I don't know. I thought that was the 17th. I don't know. I think that was the 18th. Either way, dude, it don't matter. I'm that's not going to waste time fucking figuring when, out whether it's a... Yeah, yeah. This is what happens when you're stuck in a house when it's a pandemic. Right, and like, you don't, you don't, when it's snow outside, it's a pandemic outside. Like, you don't know what day it is. Um... But yeah, man, I don't know. That just gives me a lot of hope. I think it's really cool. Uh, they've got programs now, um, you know, where where hopefully STEM, uh, you know, those STEM programs for kids to really start learning more about science and technology and things like that. Um, I think this is just going to be, you know, hopefully we get some really cool information back from from Perseverance being up there. I'm excited about it. Um, yeah, man. Um uh, That's yeah, about you're it. You're right. You're right. It landed uh, February 18th. See, I'm not stupid. Everyone thinks I'm stupid. No, nobody. Yeah. Nobody thinks that, man. Yeah, everyone thinks I'm stupid, no. and I'm not. All right, so we got ten minutes left, man. Uh, is there anything you wanted to talk about, Ma? Like any well, any news stories well, that stuck out to you in the past week or so? Well, I was really excited about. Uh, I, I'm excited about stuff in space. It's one of my goals in life. It's just to learn as much as I can about space. And, um, I, I want to, um, just know everything possible that, that my mind can absorb. Yeah. And so, yeah, this is, um, I want to know about all of it that I, you know, that I can, everything I can. So, um, huge goal in my life. And I would like to um, share that if I ever have a podcast, um, of my own, I, I might touch on that quite a bit on, um, encouraging people to, you know, to do the same because it's, uh, you know, we're, we're actually, we look, we look at it like it's so different. What's out there is, is so different than where we are. Yeah, exactly. True. Cause out there it is cold and has oh, snow yeah, and yeah. in here I it mean, is warm out, with out no there, snow. Out there in, <laughs> in the, in the universe, the multi- moon, the moon universe. <laughs> The moon, the mooniverse, <laughs> the bladiverse. Is, <laughs> is that is that like the multiverse from Marvel? Yeah. But it's the yeah. bladiverse or yeah. the mooniverse. Yeah, yeah, right, right. We're living in the mooniverse. But um, but, <laughs> but the point is to that we are part of it. We're actually not separate from it. We're a part of this whole like giant, wonderful, magical, mystical thing. Yeah, you know that. Um, and we are literally made from stardust. So we need to know. I am a dusty star. Yes, you are. <laughs> so that makes so me when a- I cough and dust comes out, it's stardust. Yeah, right. Uh, Does that make me a star boy like the weekend? Yeah. I'm a star boy. Yeah, I'm a motherfucking star boy. Yeah, a great. Uh, yeah, maybe I'll play that on my my <laughs> podcast when I'm uh, if if the weekend approves. You know, uh, and uh, I don't think it's up to the weekend. It's probably up to his yeah. record label. Yeah. Now, what you got to do is you got to find an eight bit remix of Starboy, which they probably have. I guarantee you that exists somewhere. Is it too late to talk about the halftime show? Uh, no. Nah, if you want to talk about a halftime show, talk about it. What's up? So I didn't watch the. What, game. What's your opinion on on the halftime show? Well, I've I was already a fan of the weekend. Um, I like many of his songs love some of the songs um his voice to me 
reminds me just a little bit of Michael Jackson. I don't know if anyone shares that opinion, but, and I was glad. I, I mean, I was very happy to see him, uh, you know, be the one to do the halftime show. Yeah. So, so I did, in fact, find the Starboy remake of, of, I'll just let that play a little low in the background. Um, <laughs> yeah. Oh, shit. Uh -oh. I, you, they're, they're, I guess if I lock my phone, it, it, uh, it came, goes away. It came, it went. Came and went and it went. Uh, but yeah, so what did you think about, uh, uh about the halftime show? Like, what, it, like overall, he spent $7 million of I his know. own money to, to make that happen. I, I know. I, I, I was reading that he did that, but, um, I thought the, um, I thought it was great. Um, I, I did a little more research on it, uh, too, and looked at some of the, um, you know, the, the story behind why some of the scenes were chosen or, you know, what happened yeah. there, like with the bandaging or. Well, know, I know the bandaging like that, was like a whole thing from last year from, yeah. from blinding lights. Yeah. And, and, you know, just different things that they did. So that made it more interesting. You know, and, uh, but, uh, I thought it was great. Um, and I'm not a person that knows how to, um, do anything with, with music equipment and whatever. Yeah. And I know this is a, you know, I just wish, um, every time there's a halftime show and I know this is probably impossible to do, but I hope they improve the, the sound. Well, yeah. And, and I mean, it's, future. it's a lot of, it's a lot of, uh, intricate, things that go into producing because you not only are performing it live but you're also performing it for the tv so like mm -hmm. it's understand it like and, and the halftime show is produced only for the tv it's not produced for the people that are there right mm -hmm. now you have to also consider that the speakers that it's going that it's being the the sound is also being fed through every speaker in the stadium so they have to make sure that the microphone itself is is not taking in that the the feedback from from the own sound that it's kicking out um so so yes almost every halftime show ever the vocals are are harder to hear than anything unless it's like a pop singer who is trying to do more dancing than they are singing um and so as a result you're getting more of like a of of a pre-performed like routine you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so but yeah, I thought. I mean, I thought the I thought the halftime show was really like the highlight of the whole game. The game mm -hmm. was boring itself, um, but the halftime show was cool. Uh, anything else you want to talk about, Ma? Anything else you're like fiending to to speak on? Um, well, um, just uh, you know, trying to uh, close out my weekend. Speaking of the weekend, I'm trying to close out my weekend with some. Uh, Pretty awesome documentaries. We've we've yeah. been watching a, uh, pretty much uh, anything Nick chooses. No, <laughs> I mean no, no, white no, rice, no. white rice. No, <laughs> no, it's not just what I choose. It's if I left it up to her to pick a fucking show <laughs> or a movie or it, anything. It, it does when take, dinner is like ready to be served. It I'm would literally <laughs> take us forty five minutes before we could even eat because we're trying to figure out what what to watch. So it's I'm just true. like, all right, yeah. Disney Plus, Netflix, whoop de whoop, <laughs> grab something, hit it is, play. It is true. Like I, I'm not, I, I'm literally not playing things that like I'm like stoked to watch. Like I've played a bunch of like Disney classics and like Wreck It Ralph and shit. Like it's not like I'm playing like, you know, I'm trying to play things that because like I like action adventure and a bunch of shit like that. Mm -hmm. She does not. You know, she doesn't want bang, bang, boop, boop, wee, wee, blow, blow, blow. You know, she don't want all that shit. So, like, I'm trying to find things that, like, are, are a happy medium you of, know, like. And, and I try. I try to make my decision, but. Um, Wait, but she I'm, did pick Beverly Hills Ninja, though. She picked Beverly Hills Ninja. Well, so we've, she, that, was a, that was something we watched for years. Well, yeah, and, that's, that's and one you, of our, like, go-to. You can just never get tired of, you of Beverly Hills Ninja. You cannot. It's so funny. And, uh. So, yeah, but, uh, yeah, that's true. He has to pick because if, if he waits on me, it will be a very long time it before be. I make my final decision. She's had one, she's had one documentary she wants to watch and she always recommends it at like 11 o'clock at night. And I'm like, I'm not trying to look at slaughterhouse videos and by slaughterhouse. No, I do not mean like Joe Budden slaughterhouse. 
like uh, I'm talking about like animal cruelty documentaries at oh, like 11 but, or midnight yeah. and I'm like well, we no. haven't watched any at all yet like that and we are watching actually the game the game changers today. yeah the game changer that is uh that is today's uh mm-hmm. that is today's gonna, goal is to, to, start, to watch that going to start with that so that's gonna be fun man I'm excited uh just to see you know uh you are a vegetarian who yeah. is well you're you're like you're you still are eating potato chips that are not vegan. So, like, you got to... Oh, I am. I am. Well, vegan. no, no. You said it as of recent. You've been uh, uh, finding out that, like, Tostitos are not vegan oh, and things like, like yeah, that. Oh, like, yeah. Well, I thought so a like, certain... So, t- yeah. so I, just I, like Scott Pilgrim... But, but not doing it on purpose. So, so just so. like one of Scott Pilgrim's enemies, I think it was Ted or Todd, you cannot have your vegan powers like Todd until you have fully gone vegan. So, so here's what happened. You have to move. So, you have to yeah. move the tostitos out so of your body. I, so I was a vegetarian for 27 years, and I. You went vegetarian when you were pregnant with me, right? I waited till. That's how I know how many years because I I I was I wanted to be vegetarian early in the pregnancy, and I realized that maybe it's not a good time to make super giant, uh, you know, diet changes when you're pregnant so i i did cut out a lot of uh i was down to just only i was like a pescatarian by the end um but i you know was cutting stuff out somewhat gradually and then um upon you being born you know i became vegetarian for all these years and i thought well you know the egg industry the dairy industry not crazy about it but at least um you know, there no harm done and whatever. And I really made myself just, I kind of in the back of my mind knew that wasn't the truth. And I started watching some films myself that I also, like other people, uh, don't want to see their suffering. And I saw it and I'm like, uh, I cannot be a part of it. So yeah. if anything has gone into my body since then, that's not vegan. It's because I, it's I by just, I, yeah, yeah. So well, and, that, and that's, that's completely and it's, understandable, and, and it's and it's not a diet; it's a it's a statement; it's a stand. I feel like I feel like it's a stand against uh, violence and speciesism. And yeah, yeah, and I mean, you're not you're not a vegan for like the trend. You're a vegan because you truly believe in like making sure animals are yeah. well taken care of. Well, and, you know, and I, actually, and so we are a little bit over time, well, uh, but we uh, I, I will be having a, a sixty minutes with mom interview. Uh, where actually I do want to talk to you more about like how you got into vegetarianism, veganism, uh, kind of what your stances are and things sure. like that. Um, so we will be touching on that this week. Uh, so you will be getting a bonus pod uh, where we're touching on things uh, really that my mom just wants to talk about, man. Uh, just really interviewing my mom, talking to her about, you know, her life and her choices and, uh, you know, just kind of how, you know, just her positive influence and things like that on my life, things like that. So, uh, but thank you guys so much for tuning in. This has, in fact, been 60 Minutes with Rice plus Mama Rice Bowl over here. She, again, is off camera, but she is on mic. So if you are tuning into the YouTube, please uh, don't feel discouraged. You ain't seeing Mama Rice over here. She, you know, that's her choice, and I got to respect it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, yeah, any last words, Ma? Uh, it was uh, great participating in this today. It was uh I liked it, and uh, hopefully uh, there will be more. Hell yeah. With that said, are you ready to sing it with me, Ma? Are you ready to sing it with me? Are you ready to sing it with me? What it fucking do? It's your boy, White fucking Rice. Oh, come on. I threw a freaking in there. She got to ruin the swag, man. It's (laughs) all good. She trying to go PG when it's rated R. It's all good. It's (laughs) all good. With that said, we out of here, man. We out this beast. Peace. Peace.